Grace, mercy, and peace be multiplied unto you from our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. If you look at the uh, front of our bulletin this morning, our topic obviously is a, a friend of God. And uh, the message today is not about uh, us trying to find a way to God, or us trying to earn God's friendship, but God has chosen to be our friend first. And so God has come to us first. And that if we're going to be a friend of God, there's also some responsibility involved in that uh, friendship on our behalf. So we'll be talking about that today. So let's begin with a word of prayer. Almighty and gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for your goodness and your power and your grace and your love. Your love is so deep that we do not always understand it. And yet you're always loyal to us because you've called us to be your own. And so we ask that by the power of your spirit this day, you would open up our minds again as you open up the minds of those disciples to understand the power in your word. Amen. Amen. Let us share that text that's printed for us in our bulletin uh, this morning. My command is this. Love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. Most of us are old enough to remember that one of the most popular television shows between 1994 and 2004 was called Friends. It was about three young men and uh, three uh, young women who lived in the same apartment complex in New York. Uh, they shared the joys and the sorrows of life and love, but they were not above sticking their noses into one another's businesses. Now, we all need friends. It's the human need for community. Uh, this week happened to be looking at the Drudge Report. And the Drudge Report had a survey that Cigna Insurance Company just completed. And this is what Cigna Insurance Company dis discovered as they reviewed 20,000 adults between 18 years and older. And they found out that the survey revealed that there's a loneliness epidemic in America. Their answers are one of the reasons that it is critical that Redeemer remain a genuinely friendly place. 46% of Americans reported that sometimes or always they felt alone. One in four Americans, 27%, never feel as though they are able to be understood by other people. Another reason we as a congregation are thrilled about our uh, Stephen's ministry under uh, Deacon Jim and his wife Sherilyn. Two in five Americans sometimes or always feel their relationships are not meaningful. And they're isolated. One in five reported that they rarely or never feel close to people or feel like people, there's someone they could talk to. Only about half the Americans, 53%, have a meaningful personal social inner reaction in which they can have an extended conversation with a friend. Human beings are by nature social human beings. And the survey is telling us there is a problem without community. John 15, Jesus said, this is my command that you love one another. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants anymore because a servant doesn't know what the master is doing. I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I've heard from my father. Now the term friend conveys a sense of closeness, a sense of trust and sharing. Friendship means close, confidential relationships. When we demonstrate friendliness, it means that we care deeply for the concerns of others. And when we do that, we are simply imitating Jesus. Redeemer is built on this understanding of Jesus' friendship with us that is to be shared. We are built on this understanding of being a friend with Jesus, then letting that acceptance and acts of friendliness or kindness be felt by others. Jesus said, you're my friends if you do what I command. So what does he command? Well, that we love and accept one another. In the Old Testament, Exodus chapter 33, verse 11, we find the Lord spoke to Moses face to face, just as a man speaks with his friend. It was an act of intimacy and friendship initiated by God, not by Moses. 
God doesn't love Moses because of something Moses had done. God doesn't love us because of anything that we are, have not done. His love isn't based on our worthiness at all, but on his goodness and his love. When you and I read through the life of Moses, we see that there were these face-to-face meetings that he had with God on a regular basis. They didn't just happen by accident. Moses was intentional about creating opportunities to see the face of God. Throughout the life of Moses, we see over and over again this open conversation with God. This level of relationship and friendship requires intentionality and regular communication. Moses did not just speak to God once in a while when there was a crisis or when he needed something, but he talked as a friend, maintained regular and open communication with God. Look at Abraham. Abraham was called a friend of God. Now, God didn't love Abraham because of something he had done. According to the book of Joshua, we know that Abraham worshipped false gods beyond the river in Babylon before God called him to faith. God doesn't love us because of anything we have or have not done. His love for Abraham, his love for us, isn't based on our worthiness, but on his goodness. James 2 says, Abraham believed God and was credited to him for righteousness, and he was called God's friend. There's a second vital factor that contributes to enduring friendships, and is that of loyalty and dependability. If you reflect on those people around you that you count as your closest friends, it's those that you can count on when the chips are down. Even when they know everything about you, you can still count on them. Maybe it's your spouse or one or two others that you count on as close friends. Now, we all have acquaintances that we call friends. But life, in life, there's really only one or two intimate close friends. Maybe one is your spouse. My best friend is my spouse. Now, you might say the same. It's Jesus who calls us his friends. He knows us. And he still calls us his friends. You can count on him. Your spouse cannot be an acquaintance. It just doesn't work. Neither can Jesus be an acquaintance. You can be an acquaintance of Jesus and still go to heaven by believing in him. But Jesus wants to be your friend. And that calls for a deeper relationship. Remember our definition? The term friend conveys a sense of closeness, of trust, of sharing. Very simply, friendship means a close, confidential friendship. And this is the kind of relationship Jesus is talking about. He wants to be our close, intimate friend, not just an acquaintance. Jesus is the one who has initiated this friendship with us. And it is his Holy Spirit that's called us to believe in his death and his resurrection. As Christians, he calls us to be his friends just as he called Moses and Abraham and his disciples as friends. But it's up to you and I if we want to be an acquaintance or a friend. There's some movement we need to make. Now we've all heard and perhaps used the phrase fair weather friend. We use it of those people who are very pleased to be our friends when everything is fine and going well. God is not a fair weather friend. It's remarkable that Abraham was termed a friend of God. The great, almighty, ever-present, all-powerful, all-knowing creator was the one who made the statement. This was not Abraham's assessment of his relationship with God, nor how he thought about God. It was a statement that God made about Abraham. God had chosen him and called him a friend. Jesus said, whoever has my commands and obeys them, he is the one who loves me. He who loves me will be loved by my Father. And I too will love him and show myself to him. So if you and I love God, then we want to grow in our knowledge of him and we will obey his commands. It is our obedience that through that that God discloses more of himself to us. He says, you are my friends if you do what I command. Remember, Abraham obeyed God, even through some very difficult situations. So how is it possible? Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him will bear much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. So to bear the fruit of Jesus' character, 
Jesus' character is joy, peace, kindness, gentleness, goodness, and self-control, and faithfulness. Those are character traits of our Lord. And these character traits can only come from intimacy of continually staying attached to the vine. We need to stay connected to God by talking to him every day. Reading his word every day and depending on him. Friendship also needs time to grow. The valley vineyards have leafed out. The vine brings up to the branches the water and the nourishment. And then it takes time to produce the fruit and to make the wine that we all enjoy. It takes time for you and for me to nurture our friendship with God. It is spending time, special time with him daily, reading his word or talking to him. You know, just letting him know that he cares for us and thanking him for that and making some concerns to his table, to his throne. Now, you and I also know that there is a profound difference between Christianity and the multitude of organized and other personal belief systems that we find out in the world. All these other personal belief systems that we hear about or read about, they all maintain that you and I must do our best to escape that penalty of sin and the broken promises. Christianity states that God has rescued us. God has rescued us. Adam, Eve, Moses, Abraham, and all who believe in Jesus. And it is God who makes the initiative to call us his friends. God sent Jesus to make things right over 2,000 years ago. He's a true man and true God, born in a little town called Bethlehem. And for the rest of his life, he constantly obeyed God completely. And by that, won our forgiveness. And he bridged a gulf of transgressions over this canyon filled with our acts of disobedience. He bridged that with his death on the cross. And he took all of our broken commandments. With his substitutionary death, he rescued us from hell. After three days, his lifeless body came forth from that grave. A wondrous proclamation of the power of God's Holy Spirit, victorious from the grave. He came out of that stone-carved tomb of, that held him, and he became the conqueror, the vanquisher of sin, death, and Satan, who enjoys holding people in the grip and the fear of death. Because of what Jesus has done, all who believe in him as Savior find that they are welcomed into this intimate friendship with the Father. If Jesus is just an acquaintance with you this day, he's inviting you to become his friend. He's already yours. He wants to be your friend and have a deeper relationship. And so the next move is up to you. Talk to him every day. It's just that simple. Worship him each week. And then during the week, stay in touch. To be a friend, one cares deeply. God cares deeply about you. And me. To be a friend means to be dependable and loyal. God is dependable and loyal. To be a friend, he asks us to trust and give time for growth. To be a friend, he asks us to obey his commands and love will flow forth. Amen. And now may the power of God's Holy Spirit and his friendship continue to deepen in your walk with him. Let us stand, and this morning we will confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed, printed on page 9 in our order of worship. I believe in God.